In the meantime, we are, as always, pushing our Eat Local initiative. Um, you know, I read a statistic that about one in 10 small businesses will probably end up going under from this unfortunate crisis. So if you have the opportunity, you have the funds, please, please, please support your local restaurants and businesses. And I see Brandon. Yep, Brandon, can you hear us? Yep, connecting to audio. All right. I think he should be able to hear us now. Brandon, can you hear us? Maybe. Hi. Hi. Hey, Jackie and Ryan, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. Can you hear us? Hmm. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Can hear you. I hear you. Oh, perfect. Let's see. <laughs> Hey, okay, you hear us perfect, Brandon. Welcome. We said this before you got on, but this is Brandon Cooper for everyone who doesn't know him. He's the first vice chairman yes. of the Maryland Republican Party. Brandon, thank you for joining the YR takeover of the MCGOP Club Direct Line. Hey, glad to be here. Fellow YR. <laughs> Fellow YR, probably the funniest roaster from last year's roast. Oh, thank you. Thank that you. hopefully happens again this year. <laughs> hopefully so. I got some <laughs> jokes lined up for... Um... Former Governor Bob Ehrlich, ready for it. Yeah, I think my brother's going to move his engagement party, so I might actually be able to go. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Priorities, you know. <laughs> so, Brandon, we brought you on to talk a little bit about what's going on with the state party right now, what you can tell us about the convention, you know, with everything so up in the air with COVID-19. So what's happening right now? Exactly. So twice a year, um, Central Committee members from across the state, we have about uh, 300 of them come together for our annual spring and fall convention. Unfortunately, this pandemic that the president and our governor, as you mentioned, is leading very strongly and responding to is impacting our plans. And so uh, Chairman Dirk Hare announced, I think last week, that we would have to go to a virtual convention. Our convention is on May 16th. Uh, usually it's Friday and Saturday, the 15th and 16th. Uh, but today now it's moving to Saturday, May the 16th. Um, and it's the first, first time we've ever done a virtual convention. And as Nick Lee was saying earlier, we do have some important business to take care of, um, election of our national committee, women and um, men and man, and also our delegates to the national convention for uh, Donald J. Trump. And so that show must go on. And so I want to give a shout out to our amazing executive director, Corinne Frank, deputy director, Jason, and the whole tech committee for really, in a matter of weeks, putting together what I think is going to be a phenomenal virtual convention for the first time in the state party. Hopefully not a, a repeat will happen in Iowa um, yeah. with their caucus fiasco, but I have confidence in our leadership here in the state that is going to go out without a hitch. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And being on those tech committee calls, I, I like to open up with, I hope we can at least do this better than Robbie Muck. So, you know. <laughs> there you go, you know. <laughs> yeah, but. Pretty low bar. Um, Beyond the virtual convention, I know you've been doing a lot during your time as first vice chair of our municipal and lower level races. Um. Are there any races that you'd like to highlight or talk about or different ways that people can still stay involved during the time where they're at home? Definitely. There's one that I've been particularly interested in, and that's taking place in Washington County, um, the Hagerstown uh, Town Council race. And so, you know, uh, everybody traditionally thinks of Western Maryland as pretty red, but when it comes to the urban areas, unfortunately, there's um, a little blend of blue. Um, we currently have uh, some of the seats on the city council where we're trying to get a commanding hold of it. So there's some great candidates running up there um, that we're uh, working with the state party and supporting um, in ways and just making sure we have great candidates all across the board. But that's one in particular. Then also in Baltimore City, that's probably the biggest election this year um, with the mayor and city council and all the drama that's been taking place in Baltimore City. Um, as Nicolay was talking about earlier, we've never, it's been decades since we elected a Republican governor for the second time. It's been about 70 years since we elected a Republican in Baltimore City at all. But I think with the uh, two out of the last three mayors leaving under criminal indictment and um, yep. other issues going on in Baltimore, I really do think that this year, 2020, folks just want an alternative choice. Whether it's Democrat, Republican, they want somebody who puts the community first. And so there's, again, I don't want to start naming some of the candidates and miss out one and hurt some feelings, but we have a great roster of candidates running up in Baltimore for mayor and on city council down. And I'm actually involved helping those get one as well. Yeah, definitely. And I, I would strongly encourage everyone watching. We have lots of people, both 
people who've been involved for a while and people who are brand new reach out, get involved with these campaigns, even now that we're virtual, it doesn't matter that you live in Montgomery County and they may be in Baltimore City or Washington County. You can help out however however they need. Exactly. That's a good point because right now, you know, we're not able to do our traditional door knocking and campaign events. It's all going on online. So phone calls and social media and email uh, has always been a part of the campaigns, but now it's even more emphasized. You see the president's campaign is really embracing the going digital and taking his lead. I think that's something that we can do across the state. And as you mentioned, if you live in Montgomery County, if you live in Prince George's County where I live, you can still help out in Baltimore City and Washington County during this time. Um, and so definitely- It's, it's a great to time to get creative. You know, Think of new <laughs> ideas, new innovative ways. That is the thing. I've worked at the RNC. I worked in numerous campaigns across the state over the last 10 years. And this election cycle is just about creativity. I told someone we were on a campaign call a few weeks ago for a candidate in Baltimore City. And I told the volunteers on there, you know, I know it's your first time working on a campaign, but you picked the best time to do it because the rule book is thrown out the window at this point. Mm -hmm. And so you were learning just like we are. Um, and it's really a time to be creative and come out with new ways to reach voters without leaving your house um, until the state of the home border is released. Cool. So switching topics a little bit. So I know that uh, recently uh, Chairman Hare also announced the Maryland Strong campaign, Maryland GOP Strong. What other ways can we as Republicans get involved with helping out in the community? I know we talk about our Eat Local initiative all the time, but what other ways are there? Are we collecting donations? Um, how can we help out in the community? I mean, that's a great way. I mean, we have, again, elected officials from the governor to the General Assembly. Um, I was just talking with uh, Bowie City Council member Roxy Endemanu about what they're doing in Bowie. Um, there's ways that elected officials can help out, but also uh, activists as ourselves, what we can do to try to make a difference. As Dirk was talking about giving um, business to local businesses right now that are kind of hurting. Again, this um, stay at home order is needed. We're thankful for the leadership that's going on. We also had to realize that it's not just jobs are on the line, people's livelihoods, people who's built and started small businesses are now facing the most difficult time in their lives right now, trying to hold on to their life's work. It may take yep. years to build a business, but it can go away in a few months when you don't have any customers coming in. And so I think what Chairman Dirk was talking about and making sure that while you're cooking at home and you know doing things that way, don't forget to do takeout once or twice a week to keep those businesses in shape so that when we do get past this, and I know we will, we're able to go back to these businesses that we've always patroned for so long. And so I think that's one key way looking out for your neighbors, um, finding out ways that your coworkers or anyone else who may be in need, particularly in my job, I work at a law firm actually in Montgomery County. I know that some of our coworkers have been picking up groceries for some of the more older uh, workers at our, at our firm. And so I thought that was just, again, just creative ways to help out. And it's really showing during this time of tragedy that we can be uh, a lifeline to those in our community. So I think there's many ways to help out. I know not just the state party, but Central committees across the state are doing things, kind of in Dirk's um, in um, Dirk's footprint as far as MD cares and you know stuff like that. So there's so many ways to help out, um, and we're going to need it because it's not the peak yet. I think I was listening to the press conference from the president earlier. Um, they're expecting the peak to in different air parts of the country to happen between you know end of April, May, and early June. So this is still not the worst, and not over yet, but we'll make it through. I'm sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. And I also, I know you mentioned it, but I want to give another shout out to Chairman Hare for the great initiative he's taken. And I mean, really being very generous to local businesses where he's from in Anne Arundel County and helping to support people who are really struggling. I, I mean, you alluded to it. It takes years and a lot of capital to start a business. And every single week that we remain closed, it, it seems it's very much, it gets worse and worse. And it's a cascading effect the longer you go without customers and the strain it puts on businesses. So. Go out there, support Definitely. your local restaurants, support your local shops and businesses. I did that earlier today for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so what else do you want to tell us? What else have you been up to while you've been stuck at home? I know. I mean, mainly it's just the campaigns that we have going on. Um, we have the 7th Congressional District of Kim Clasic coming up. I think election. My days are starting to lose track being, you know, on the <laughs> stay at home order, but uh, coming up very soon. And so that's one thing that we're really focused on. Again, I think Baltimore is a year for change this year. And so we're going to see some demanding things happen. Um, talking about the Hagerstown races, city council candidates and mayoral candidates out there and helping around right now, also party building. As I said, we have, as Nick Lee talked about, you know, Maryland's not often on the map for presidential elections, at least not until since 1990, I think, 88 or 92, 88 when um, Bush uh, Sr. won 
the state. And so ever since then, it's been kind of written off, but I don't write off anything. I, I'm a Prince George's County resident. And so I have the spirit of fighting um, in tough blue areas just by nature. And so I definitely want to see us build a strong organization. I know Andy Harris, Congressman Andy Harris, and uh, Dave Boss, your co-chairs of Trump's campaign. So they have some amazing things lined up for the year. Um, and just helping out all the way up and down. Um, we got the president to reelect and there's ways we can help during the digital time to get his message out. Even if you don't live in the battleground states, we can still do our part to help it get done. So we're Absolutely. trying to help out all ways we can do. So we figured something fun to talk about because of course we young people love to talk about drama. There was a little bit of drama uh, in the state that came up with Len Foxwell this week. So uh, we wanted to get your take on that. I've heard, you know, Republicans supposedly agreeing that that he did nothing wrong. I've heard the complete opposite. We want to get your take on that. Yeah, I think it's multiple layers, like an onion peeling it back. And I uh, want to cite again, Chairman Dirk Hare, for going out there and attacking and calling out, if nothing else, the hypocrisy, when they're talking about how we got to be civil in politics and they're talking about how you know, Donald Trump is a bully online and that we need to bring someone who acts presidential back to the White House, yet we have a chief of staff for, you know, not just anyone, but arguably one of the top three strongest and, you know, most influential elected officials in the state of Maryland. When your senior staffer is just so blatant with his, you know, some say irony or start satire, I say disrespect and his callousness toward fellow Americans, fellow humans. Um, his comment exactly was, I don't want to, you know, misquote it, but it was basically talking about people who were protesting the stay at home order and how we should, you know, lure them into a warehouse, bar the door mm. and let Darwinism take effect, AKA let them die. Mm. I just find that to be, again, at the very minimum, hypocrisy at its highest when you're calling out uh, Republicans, particularly the president for their words, and you're trying to be the party of high moral standards and high ground saying that we shouldn't be talking in that kind of way, but yet you're condoning and allowing um, a senior official on the payroll of uh, citizens in this state to have such a nasty comments towards, I look at the numbers, over almost 1 million voters who voted for uh, President Trump here in Maryland alone in 2016. And so it just makes you feel kind of some kind of way when your elected officials view you that same way. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of re recalled me back to the time that the delegate, Democrat delegate of Hartford County, uh, Delegate Lasanti, how she referred to uh, parts of Prince George's County as a racial epithet for black people county. And again, she doesn't represent anybody in Prince George's County, but the fact that she's passing laws and she's still in the General Assembly, that she's passing laws that impact me, and that's how she feels about me, it kind of kind of in the same way with me. Is that how, you know, the Comptroller's Office feels about Trump supporters yeah. here in Maryland? And so I Absolutely. definitely think it was something that needed to be called out. It shouldn't be accepted at all. I think uh, he recognized, Lynn recognized that it shouldn't have been accepted because he deleted his comment. Yeah. Um, you know, you usually don't delete things unless you recognize that it shouldn't be there in the first place. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. It, it, it's not a surprise, honestly, how they feel. It's unfortunate that it played out that way. Um, but I feel like this is just the beginning of what's going to be a very toxic election cycle. It was toxic the last time in 2016. They didn't think he would win. Um, and now his reelection, I'm just ready for a lot more to come over the next six months. Yeah, yep. I, I've tried to make the point that many people I've been talking to that if you think the Trump derangement syndrome was bad after the first time, I mean, there's a almost universal belief among those who don't like him that he couldn't possibly be elected a second time. So when that's proven wrong, hopefully, I, it, it'll really be interesting to see how people react. Oh, but, yeah. My, my university threw a candlelight vigil after Hillary Clinton lost the first time, so I can only imagine what they're going to do the second time yeah, but, they lose. <laughs> you know, much to your point about hypocrisy, Brandon, I do want to I, – I mean, I, both of the things with Lasanti and with Foxwell would be dangerous or disgusting and not things that should be said or written regardless of who says it. But I do think if it were a Republican delegate or a Republican chief of staff, there would have been a different reaction, which I think is largely the point that has been made, right? That's Bo fair. Both Len Foxwell and Les Delegate Lasanti are both in their respective jobs right now after making disgusting comments. Uh, oh, know. yeah. And, and the controller himself said, oh, well, I, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't criticize what people put, what he chooses to post on his own personal page. Whereas, I mean, and this could just be because of the yeah. Quaker school I went to, it was always taught to me that, you know, whether you're in school or outside of school, you are a representative of that school. And you yeah. should adhere to that same policy. And it's the same here. You are an elected official 
And whether it's your personal Facebook page or your public Facebook page, you are representing your position. And again, it's it's different when I think elected officials attack each other. They yeah. put themselves out there on the line to be in the public eye, uh, public service of that nature. But I just felt like it was a little bit crossing the line when you direct your comments towards everyday American citizens. Absolutely. Who aren't, you know, putting their, their public lives. So you can, you know, Trump has said some pretty, you know, sleepy Joe and a bunch of other comments against other elected officials. Um, but I always, you know, even when he does it, when you're going after someone who does not put their lives out there for that type of public ridicule, I think there's a different standard that should be applied for sure. Absolutely. So we have a few minutes left here, um, Brandon. Any final thoughts or things that we haven't covered that you'd like to say? Uh, no, just that the YR is doing great. I love Maria and the uh, energy she brings to the job. And you guys are great representatives of the organization. Um, just, you know, join us at our, for since committee members, join us at our convention on uh, May 16th. It's going to be amazing. We're having our hospitality suite that we usually have on Friday night, the Saturday before um, on May 9th. And I understand that uh, the, uh, Corinne and others are working on some great things. And just again, kudos to uh, Corinne Frank and Jason and just all those behind the scenes characters who are making sure this convention goes off without a hitch, our first ever virtual convention. So I'm excited for it. A Thanks for having me on. Valley Street. That's going to be interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Bring your own food. There you go. Bring your own beer as well. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Brandon, for joining us. Thank you. Look forward to having you on another time. Thank you. All right. Well, everyone, that was pretty much everything we had to talk about tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. And please leave comments, share this video with your friends. Let us know who you would like to see us bring on to Direct Line, and we will do our best to get them. And if you know people that you can get on Direct Line, send us an email. Yep, definitely. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. We'll see you soon. Hopefully in person soon. We'll see. <laughs>